Have you ever heard the advice, start with a small game? Or what about, keep it simple? These are some of the most commonly repeated phrases to new game devs, and also to not so new game devs. In this video, I wanna share the key lessons learned or relearned as I was making my free and open source micro game, Chicken Defense. Full game on itch, full project on GitHub, links in the description, both are free. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dream become reality by sharing some of the lessons I've learned and relearned so you don't have to make them, hopefully. The first lesson I learned and relearned is everything takes longer than you think. This is nothing new. This is the most well-known thing in software development. And somehow, even with doing development over 20 years now, I still have this problem. Everything takes longer than I think. In fact, this is so prevalent that commonly, whenever a software development manager receives an estimate from their team and then has to report that to a higher management, we'll take that and multiply it by two or even three and still sometimes don't get it done on time. For this game, I estimated that's eh, probably gonna take, I don't know, 20, 25 hours, which is about a week for me. I work full time on top of this, so 20, 25 hours is about all I can do game dev wise per week. I more or less knew how to do everything here. I knew what I wanted to do. There were a few uncertainties about how to do some of the more fine grained nitty gritty details, but big picture, I knew what I was gonna do. And importantly, how to do it. How long did you think that it took? 15, 30, 45, 60 hours? Well, just for the implementation, it took 45 hours. And while maybe you're like, Chris, you suck at estimating. If we just assume for a minute that maybe I'm average, at estimating, we can easily see how large projects are not delivered on time. Now, if we look at Chicken Defense, this is a pretty aggressively scaled down game, right? The AI is simple, there's no fancy controls, there's not a fancy UI, there's no unlock systems or depth of gameplay, it's pretty bare bones, right? That's why I call it a micro game. I think that made it an excellent teaching opportunity because we have relatively simple mechanics, but a bunch of them integrated all together so you can see a complete game. Now let's take a second and think about this in your current project. Do you already know how to do everything? If so, maybe you need to pick a new game and you're not gonna learn very much if you already know how to do everything. Now, let's say you don't know how to do everything. Well, that means we probably need to bake in a lot of time to the uncertainties and also just elongate that timeline of what you think something is gonna take because it's probably gonna take longer than that to the tune of two or three times. Let's move on to lesson number two. Generics are powerful but kind of a pain to use in the editor. Now, if you don't know what a generic is, you've probably used them before. If you ever used a list or a dictionary, you have to provide those angle brackets and say, this is the type of thing going in this list. The list is using a generic type. The list itself doesn't care anything about what you're putting into it, just that it's going to be of that type. They behave the same regardless of what you put into them. Now, not knowing the type makes it significantly harder, as you can imagine, for the Unity editor, or the different menus to work because how can they know what type you want if it can be any type? Now let's consider the snake and the fox. These enemies are almost identical, mostly different by configuration. They both want to chase and eventually eat some target. Let's say that it's an arbitrary target of T type. That's where our generics come in. The rest of everything else that they're going to do is the same. From a strictly code-driven approach, we could do this pretty simply with like enemy base that accepts a type argument of T target type. Our code can do something to find that type and chase that type of thing and eventually, of course, eat it. Then whenever we create our enemy or fox or whatever, we'd say enemy base type egg snake equal the new enemy base of type egg. Cool. And the fox would do the same with the chicken. That'd be really easy. Now, if we imagine how can we do that in the editor, it's not easy for us to be able to attach a mono behavior enemy base with the type argument, because then we have to somehow inject that type on the UI and it's just, it's not supported out of the box at least. What you can do though, is create subclasses like snake extends enemy base of type egg and fox extends enemy base of type chicken. Then you just attach the snake and the fox mono behaviors, even though they don't have to have any actual implementation because it can all be handled in that generic base class. So we can still use generics pretty extensively in our code. Just whenever we want to put something onto an inspector or use it in a menu, we end up needing subclasses of that generic type that specify the type. And for our third and final use case here, use simple implementations until you 
absolutely have to make it more complicated. There's a dichotomy here because I do think that if you look forward, you can see when you're going to need to make something more complicated and it will save you a lot of time and effort if you support that up front. But if you try to do that for everything and look at use cases that don't exist in your project today, you can spend a lot of time making an overly complicated system that takes a lot longer than it needs to to implement and ends up slowing down your development significantly. It can even introduce problems and make it a lot harder to debug because you've added all these layers of abstraction in for something that isn't ever going to scale up realistically in your project. So in general, I recommend you start with the most simple bare bones implementation of whatever you need. Only if you're a thousand percent sure that this thing is going to scale up and need to support all kinds of different requirements, only then implement that crazy robust abstracted system that can handle every use case in the entire world. In like 99% of times, you're not gonna actually use that in your project. Now, if you wanna just make a complicated system for learning educational purposes, go for it. But if you're trying to release a game, start with your simple bare bones implementation. An example of how this happened to me was I ended up implementing a more complex use case for an event bus than I really needed and ended up running into some weird problems when an enemy would die and they were also listening for a death event. It would end up basically breaking the whole thing. So I ended up having to rip that whole thing out and replacing it with a much more simple solution that was a lot less code to implement didn't have any of those problems and ultimately would have saved me a lot of time, effort and headache debugging it. So to recap, everything takes longer than you think. Generics are powerful and kind of a pain in the butt to use in the editor. And three, keep it simple. At least two of these you've probably heard before. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how many times you hear them, you can still run into these problems. Try to keep them top of mind because here we are, 20 years later, I still run into these same problems. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. And if you did, go ahead and like and subscribe, help the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people. And if you wanted to show your support for the channel, you could get yourself some Lom Academy merch. You can use the affiliate links down in the description for Humble Bundle, the Unity Asset Store, or you can become a Patreon or YouTube member. Those last ones will get your name up here on the screen, access to a supporter exclusive Discord server, where we share what we're working on. You get direct access to ask me questions and priority support on any of those things. At the awesome tier and higher, you get a shout out like Ivan, Iphiobolus, Perry, and Mustafa. And of course, there's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.